Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be putting together a utility belt for the Batman. Uh, and it is very, very utility in the sense that it is much more like a work belt than, say, like the things we saw in The Dark Knight or Batman Begins or the Tim Burton Batman and his utility belts in BBS and uh, the Justice League. So, without any further ado and without me rambling on anymore, Let's go ahead and just get right into the belt. I'm going to make the base of the belt essentially from scratch. I uh, can't really tell from the production photos what it's made out of, but I just think nylon strap looks tactical. So I'm using that. could be leather, and if so, then perhaps I'll remake it later. Uh, a lot of the makers I've seen that are selling completed belts are leather. But I also took and used contact cement to put... A strip of five millimeter EVA foam. This end that there's less foam on will be secured to a buckle and this other end will be able to loop through and velcro so I can adjust how tight or loose I want it to be depending upon how much I eat essentially and gain or lose weight and am active or whatever. I'm gonna actually use is just a center release buckle and this looks very Robin-esque, I think, or just superhero in general. However, it looks nothing like the one from the movie. I'm going to do a few things to it to kind of give it that feel, but it's for one and a half inch strap, which is what this is. And considering the fact that I am significantly shorter than Robert Pattinson or his stuntman, I feel like his is probably more like a two inch wide, but since I'm shorter, I'm going to scale it down so it fits my body and looks good on me. So if you're taller, you're probably going to want something wider than this and more robust. And with my buckle, I'm going to start by sanding this area here to rough it up. Because I'm going to glue on a couple of scrap chunks of 2mm EVA foam before painting it with silver chrome. And on this side, I'm going to sand it too to paint just this part here silver. Okay, I've painted my buckle with Model Master Silver Chrome after putting on a couple of pieces of scrap foam for accents. Now I'm going to go ahead and glue this onto the one side and prep this other one for Velcro.
belt is together. Super glued this side and attached my industrial strength Velcro, which does have an adhesive, but trust me, you need contact cement because the Velcro is much stronger than the actual adhesive backing on this Velcro. I've been trying to find it just without the adhesive backing and I can't find it locally. I didn't see it on Amazon, but maybe I'm just typing in the wrong keywords. Next thing you're gonna need is the mag pouch patterns, which are pretty long, so I had to divide them in two. So tape that together for the full pattern, or if you don't have 12 inch long pieces of foam or bigger to cut them out of, you can always just do it as is and contact cement them together. Uh, where the pattern cut is, is on the back side, so whenever you fold it over, you won't even see it. And for this, I'm gonna use contact cement. You'll notice there's some dotted lines. The lower dotted line here is the fold point for you to fold the top part over onto itself. And the top line here is just showing, showing you where to curve and fold down the top to get the mag pouch shape. I'm hoping that these are not holding magazines for an actual firearm, but we'll just have to wait until whenever this movie is released. Unless it was all conjecture and rumor, I haven't really had time to investigate it. The movie has been delayed, although not surprising due to the current state of everything. And you're also going to need four of the mag pouch filler pieces. These are five millimeter EVA foam, and these I'm doing out of two millimeter. Uh, if you want, you could just buy some mag pouches. They can get a little pricey, particularly for leather ones, but not if you know where to look, like Airsoft, Sites, Wish, basically anything that's going to come from China. But the problem with that is you have to wait the six to eight weeks for it to show up. Since I'm on a time frame of when I can do this, I'm just making my own because I don't have time to wait. I don't have the money to spend for like high quality mag pouches. So what I'm going to do is super glue these two together and these two together and then I'm going to line them up right there which is above this line by one quarter of an inch. Okay, before I fully contact cement these together, I'm going to give them a, a quick stretch down here at the bottom. Uh, there, I don't feel like, at least personally, I don't feel like there's any need to heat form this. It's two millimeter foam. You just need to give it a little stretch, which will help you to line everything up and glue it all together. After I folded it over, if you'll be able to see here, but you can see my dotted lines for the fold basically go straight across the top here. Uh, if you're having trouble figuring that out, you could always put them straight across the top on the inside and outside. But to make it look like it has a snap closure, I just used a regular old household thumbtack on each one. The two mag pouches will go here and Moving to this side of the belt, the first thing I see kind of looks like some sort of like smoke device or flashbang, I don't know. But I'm going to take a cardboard tube, just your normal paper towel roll, and 
I'm going to cut it at three inches with my hacksaw. I know I just said this is a normal paper towel tube roll. I shouldn't really say normal because it is thick enough and heavy duty enough that I have to saw through it with a hacksaw. But comparing it to like the roll of paper towels in the house, etc., it is the same size. But also feel like things like that are dependent upon the height of the person that you're making this for. If you're making this for a small child, like five, six years old, you're not going to want anything probably this large. Now, if you're a larger adult, you need to scale that up to fit you. So whether you use PVC pipe or cardboard tubing or you make a tube out of foam. Next, I took and put a cut, straight cut at two and a half inches. So that whenever I roll this up like this, I then mark where it ends. If it's a little short or a little long, if it's a little long, I can trim it off. If it's a little short, it literally doesn't matter since I'm going to have the back of this facing the belt. So even if there's a gap, no biggie. In fact, it may actually make it easier to glue with more of a straight back and have it mounted on your belt without having it being a curved back. But I'm just doing it fully curved if I can. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue this to this. For the top, I'm going to put this on my foam using a sharpie. I'm going to trace around it. Okay, so if you want the top flat, cut on the inside of the sharpie mark. I'm actually going to cut around it and then heat the foam. After I rounded off the top edge with the Dremel, I also cut some lines into it with the X-Acto knife. And the marks I was putting on the bottom was to show uh, where to start the lines. And the mark in the middle is just to let me know which ones are going to be 
the accents. Of course, on the back here, I didn't really do it very well, but this is all going to be up against the costume, and you won't really see it like the front. And capping the bottom is optional. I'm not capping mine because of the cosplay convention rules. For example, like depending upon the con, I'll give you an example of the most strict con here. When I go through the entrance, I have to go through a metal detector that you walk through, and then they wand you, and then they pat you down, and sometimes they'll have you remove pieces of your costume to further search you. On top of that, you have to remove your mask so they can take your picture without your mask uh, for their security purposes and also for your badge. Uh, when I first started going to conventions years ago, it was not like that. You just took your picture in your cosplay if you were in one and went in. But leaving this hollow will let them inspect it and see, oh yeah, this is just a cardboard tube, this is fake. Uh, and sometimes, depending on what it is, they won't let you take it in. All right, set this off with my other mag pouches. Next, we're going to do the medium pouch and contact cement along the bottom dotted line and along the edges. And this one will be where we fold it over on the top. And then two of the medium filler pieces. And same as before, five millimeter on these and two millimeter on this. For the final pouch to go on the left hand side of the belt, there's a large pouch piece. Can't really see it here because it's a Sharpie on black. Kind of see it. But there's a dotted line there that is the point where you're going to put your large pouch side pieces, and they're marked back and front because there's a slight different curve on either side. And this one I'm actually going to make functional, so it's going to have Velcro to attach it. But contact cement all along this side and from this all the way down around the U to the top on this edge. Contact cemented on my Velcro, and this is large enough that I can stick like my wallet, ID, keys, money, whatever I want in, and actually have it to carry around the convention. Since generally, the cosplay accessories like pouches and things hanging off the belt make it a little hard to get into the pockets, and things like gauntlets and gloves on your hand make it a little hard to reach around to your rear pocket and pull out your wallet, let alone your side pockets. So that's a bonus. Okay, for the holster, you're going to use two main pieces and one of the back. And if you want a slimmer holster, you can glue it to the outside of the pieces. I want a wider one because I'm actually going to use this uh, aside from this cosplay for other things. I'm going to glue mine in the middle. So contact cement along here, the edges, and then along both sides from the curve down to the next curve.
Okay, the accent piece, I just lined the top part of it up with this corner and this one offset from the edge and then use my Dremel rotary tool to round it off so it doesn't look so much like foam. Punch some holes in it and that's about it for that until I put on the straps, but I'm not putting straps or Velcro or anything on any of this stuff uh, until I plasti dip it all first. Okay, I have a bunch of these smaller clips and a larger straight one. The smaller ones actually have a bit of curve to them. And that's what I'm going to use for the straps coming off the holster that are going to go around my leg. And this one will be to attach to the actual strap, which secures the holster to the belt. I also took a piece of strapping and this triangular ring and attach two pieces around it and then attach those to one single piece which is going to get glued on the back side of this and hang down. I'm assuming that he uses this for repelling. Probably puts a cord through there to go up and down. I don't know with a grapple gun or something. I'm just guessing. I have no idea. Okay, I made a loop to put the actual belt through, and then I glued all this together with super glue and looped it through my actual little quick release with another strap and glued that to the back of the holster. Now I'm going to use two of these clips and some smaller strapping to make the leg straps. Alright, the straps to go around my leg are attached, and if I need to, I can always adjust them uh, tighter or more loosely. And 
that's pretty much finished. So I'll put this off to the side. Next is this thing, whatever this is. <clears throat> I came into the issue of the fact that I would either have to use some sort of Velcro to put this on, which I didn't necessarily want to do, or I could glue it directly to it. However, I can't take it off. And if they want to inspect it at the gate, going into a convention, if we ever happen to have those again, I need a way to take it off quickly. And my problem solving for that was I happen to have a bunch of these actually lying around. They hold Nerf rival high impact rounds, and they're usually sold, I believe, with like 40 or 50 in them. I don't know. But they have these uh, little clips on the back. So I just cut one of those off and roughed up the back side so adhesive would work. And now I'm going to sand this flat and glue it on. All the rest of the various pouches, I'm either going to use scrap leather or nylon to make loops to thread onto the belt itself.
You know, one of the last things I made is this. I didn't actually make the ring. I actually bought the ring a long time ago for a totally different project and then just held on to it. However, once again, since it's metal, kind of heavy, I don't know if they'll let me take it in. I'm going to look for something plastic in the meantime, but for the sake of finishing the video, I'm going to use this. Plus, it just looks cool. And again, I don't know what this is for. Maybe repelling or something. I have no idea, but it goes on the belt in between the holster and the two mag pouches. And just in case I have to take it off is why I put just some Velcro on a strap. Uh, would hate to have to take off the whole belt. I can just easily take this off just like I can easily unclip this. Okay, so I had mentioned I had another use for the holster aside from just as a cosplay piece. I'm going to actually use it to hold this Dart Zone Storm Squad Blaster. They're only $5 at Dollar General, uh, but I have a feeling once I remove this safety thing right here, Increase the seal on it if need be, and upgrade the spring. Uh, it's going to be able to shoot Dart Zone Pro Darts at a relatively high speed. If you want to check that out, that video will be uploaded on my other channel, where I do nerf builds and mods and things like that, but has no relevance to this cosplay or this video, aside from that. Okay, so that's going to wrap up this video. Uh, of course, you will see the entire cosplay whenever I have it finished and am able to don it uh, for the final video. Whenever that will be, not sure. Uh, I need to have it completed before Halloween, preferably. But we'll see. I may just have to run with what I have. But as always, thank you for watching. And I just passed 6,000 subscribers, so I want to say a, a big thank you to everybody that's a new subscriber and all of my uh, previous subscribers as well. You've really helped me and the channel out a lot, and I really do appreciate it. And as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.